to the Eric Metaxas Show. Please keep your arms and legs inside the car at all times. This is your final warning. Now, here's your host, Mr. Thrill Ride himself, Eric Metaxas. Oh, hello. Welcome to the Eric Metaxas Show. Folks, I was going to do a weird thing today. I was going to spend the whole hour promoting my new children's <laughs> book, Donald Builds the Wall, because somebody told me that there are still people out there that haven't purchased their copies. I find that hard to believe. But if you are out there and you are in open sin, you need to repent. <laughs> you need to get a copy of the book. Uh, and I don't need an apology, but as long as you do the right thing and get several copies of the book, okay? But the reason I'm not going to spend the hour talking about my fabulous new book, Donald Bills the Wall, is because look who I have in the studio, Ann Coulter. Welcome to the program. I can't believe you're here. You know, he hasn't built the wall. Well, I think he's building the wall. You, could, you know what I find fascinating? That you are so Ann Coulter that you couldn't just go with, hey, nice to be here. You had, <laughs> you had to come in with the wall like right out of the get-go. You just had to say that. And yeah, you're getting a lot of points with the administration, so keep hitting it. Keep hitting it. So seriously, we're, I want to talk to you, of course, about the wall, but I'm just so glad to see you. Me in the, too. What do you think of this crazy studio? I love you, this. You see that thing that looks like a Tiffany, like Tiffany glass? Uh -huh. That's Tiffany glass. It's no, actual this is Tiffany really glass. gorgeous. They used to, to this used to be a this was a club, club. the I Century that Mark Club. Mark Twain came this, to. That's right. The Century Club, uh, which now moved like uh, uptown, uh, was first here. So at the turn of the century, Mark Twain was a member. Louis Comfort Tiffany was a member, and that's why oh. the skylight is actually a Tiffany. So most of this stuff is real. I hope this building is landmarked because it otherwise, is. good. It is. Yeah, I totally. promise you they would rip it down. Well, well we know. We know. <laughs> and put up some piece of crap. Well, let's talk about something more positive, like nothing. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing more positive because there's a lot of bad stuff happening. I, it's just good to see you. I want to talk to you about everything. So why don't we, let's just get it out of the way. The wall. Go. <laughs> um, well, since the Democrats started their latest impeachment, you may have noticed, for my regular readers, um, I have... I have briefly suspended my po daily pointing out that he's not building the wall. Um, because, th th I mean, this really is madness. But I was just thinking yesterday, y you know, two things can be true at the same time. Um, the, the media must be destroyed. It's unreformable. They're lying swine. Um, hopefully Trump will accomplish that one thing. Um, he's been under relentless attack since the moment he came down the escalator. They wanted to impeach him <laughs> right. about five minutes after he right. won the election yeah. November 7th, 2016. That can be true, and it can also be true that he has not done one thing for his supporters. Okay, you're suggesting uh, in your nuanced way that he hasn't done anything for his supporters. <laughs> I actually would disagree with that. So I'm kind of amazed that you go that far. It's one thing to say he hasn't done, in your mind, the most important thing, which is to say He's done the very, wall. very little. He did not end the carry interest deduction. That was a big part of something the, that isn't even related the, to, the not what? deduction, the but what? loophole. Being he always man, calls it a deduction. Being a man of no means, <laughs> I'm not aware well, of this. Well, being a man uh, of no means, you should be annoyed that you're paying a higher tax rate than hedge fund managers are. Right. It's a ridiculous loophole. Okay. What what happens, and it's very simple to understand, you, you work for a living. You do this, you get paid, you pay your taxes Techni on your income. Technically, yes, go ahead. What's left over, yeah. you pay, you know, your mortgage, yeah. you pay for your yeah. daughter's school. Yeah. And then what, what's left over from that, you invest. You give to a bank in New York, say Morgan Stanley, they right. invest it for you. Okay, so for your income, you're taxed at, I don't know what it is now, but about 40%. Um, for your investment income, which is what's left over after you've paid your income taxes and paid for everything else in your life, you only pay, I forget what it is now, but about 15%. It goes, both of them just go up one or two points. Um, what hedge fund managers figured out in a total scam loophole is, um, well, see, everything we do as an investment, since we just take a percentage, we invest, right, that's right, what we right, do when right. they go to work every day, that's what they do, they invest other people's money. So their entire income they count as investment income. That's why Warren Buffett is always saying, oh, why do I pay a lower tax rate than my secretary? Hey, I have an idea. Let's not have hedge fund managers pay a lower rate than their secretaries. The only presidential candidate, Democrat or Republican, to ever promise to end this stupid lo loophole, and I don't care if it'll fund the, the government or not, it's unfair, it's outrageous, was Donald Trump. He was attacked for it in, I think it was the first debate, second debate, by John Kasich, 
I tweeted about it at the time. John Kasich, please donate to me, Wall Street. He's the one one person to say I'm going to end the carried interest loophole. And I might add, for the first time in world history, um, Wall Street gave, um, I'm trying to remember the number, that's right, zero dollars to Donald Trump. They gave like 90% of their money to Hillary Clinton, 10% to some green candidate or something right. else. He had the opportunity of a lifetime. We got a president elected without one penny from Wall Street. And he gets into the White House, and what does that mean? Oh, I know. It means I'll turn the keys of the kingdom over to Wall Street. I'll hire more Goldman Sachs people than Obama and Bush combined. And that's what he did. And Gary Cohn from Goldman Sachs said, no, sir, I wouldn't end the carried interest but loophole. That's now, so he didn't do it. But that's now almost three years ago. So it seems to me Still that hasn't done it. But he, <laughs> right. But he is better. He doesn't have as many Wall Street people in the administration as he did initially. Who knows? I assume he gets rid of one, replaces another. All right. All right. Listen, I mean, you mentioned knows? Wall He's Street. More. You mentioned Wall Street. Let's talk about the wall. Um, I Seriously, thought, I would, this I thought been... I would start slowly with something that wasn't immigration related. But okay. yeah, it was, I mean, I think every every um, rally, he, he mentioned almost every rally that he mentioned that he'd end the carried interest loophole. I know what every rally he said, he'd build the wall. Right, right. I mean, there were signs that was the chant. It's not, this isn't some odd little issue Anne came up with. Well, I noticed this speech on September 7th. No, that was the theme of his campaign. And again, what did he do? He got into office and, um, oh no, Mitch McConnell doesn't want the wall. And there's, I'm not going to hire anyone that would, would help me build the wall. He always had the power to build the wall. I felt like, um, you know, the good witch in The Wizard of Oz for the last four years. I've been telling him since the transition, you are the commander in chief. You don't need Congress to build the wall. In fact, it was one of the things I praised him for in, in Trump We Trust and in columns throughout the column um, or throughout the campaign as his main and most enthusiastic immediate supporter. 90% right. of his promises were things he didn't need Congress for. The one thing he needed Congress for was to repeal and replace Obamacare. Good job with that, Republicans. Um, but everything else, renegotiating the trade deals, building the wall, enforcing immigration laws, deporting the dreamers, ending Obama's unconstitutional executive order on illegal immigrants, absolutely 100% building the wall, all, all in the president's, oh, ending the carried interest loophole, taxing remittances, the amount of billions of dollars, used to be 20 billion illegal aliens sent back to Mexico. It's now, um, since, since Trump has been president, you know, the guy who's going to crack down on illegal immigration, it's been 30 billion. That's how you get Mexico to pay for the wall. If nothing else, you would think for his own, you know, sense of pride, he didn't want the media embarrassing him anymore. He would build the wall and make Mexico pay for it, which he knows how to do, or at least hmm, somebody working for his campaign knew how to do. All right, enough with the one-word answers. I want to get, <laughs> I want to go deeper with you. Okay, <laughs> so seriously, uh, you know, and of course, I'm, I'm grateful for for your uh, for your knowledge on these things. Because these aren't the kinds of things. That's why I want to do a long-form interview on this program, and especially with you, because we tend not to hear this stuff. We hear, you know, the, the, the bright, shiny stuff makes it out there. So I just want to ask you, before we go deeper into that, would you not be willing to concede, or is there a reason you don't want to concede, that he has done things uh, that were important and that should make us proud? I mean, I think that his willingness to it's in some ways not a big thing, but, but his willingness to say, we're going to move the embassy to Jerusalem. I don't care what they say. I knew oh, I was going to get gosh, that from you. Oh my gosh, I did not think any, anything could turn me against Israel. And <laughs> Donald Trump okay. is starting to make Nick. me really annoyed by this. No, 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 Why? that's Why? not what he ran on. That's not what steel well, 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 workers well, 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 in Ohio well, well, well. and Wisconsin wanted. Do? What does it have to do? Why, oh, why is it a zero-sum game? But why it, is it a zero-sum game? That, because that's all we hear them bragging about. Okay. Oh, we gave tax cuts to Wall Street and we moved the embassy, America. I, I've got other things on my list. Uh, what about... Oh, man. In fact, I turned against Ralph Reed last night. Um, I've had it with... I'm bringing this up with you as the um, representative of, of Christian in America. Yes. Um, that's, that's right. I'm the evangelical pope now. We're going to be right back, folks. If you didn't <laughs> notice, I'm talking to Ann Coulter, and she's talking to me. We'll be right back. Hey there, folks. You've heard me talk about high school girls that are being forced to compete against biological boys that identify 
as girls. You've heard me talk about cake artists, florists, business owners that are being forced by their states to create work that is contrary to their religious beliefs. Now, if this can happen to them in America, it can happen to you. Freedom is under attack in America, religious freedom in particular. I'm thankful for my friends at the Alliance Defending Freedom because they stand up. They're a nonprofit organization. They do this for no cost. They need our help. So this month, I'm asking every one of my listeners to support Alliance Defending Freedom. An investment of $100 would help ADF defend your freedom and provide the necessary resources to fight pivotal court battles. Please, folks, join the fight for freedom. It is our fight. Uh, it's a fight that we need to get involved in now. Please give to ADF. You can click below and please be generous. Thank you so much. Hey there, folks. It's here from Taxi Show. I'm talking to Ann Coulter. She's right here. Ann, I, I want to ask you, there are certain things now, because you're, you are a contrarian and you're contentious. That is basically a compliment. Uh, it's definitely a compliment, but there are certain things like this that I just, I'm dying to ask you. I consider you. myself a thought leader. Who said that? <laughs> Who said that they were a thought I did. leader? It was just, it was just uh, on Twitter the other day. Okay, you're a thought leader. You're a TV personality. I'm a contentious um, people person because everyone starts imitating what I was, and often you, um, what a few smart people were saying 10 years ago. Um, Okay, we've moved on now. Please stop talking about Israel and abortion. I was just thinking about this the other day. Um, if, if your listeners don't know, they should know um, that immigrants since 1970 have been voting um, more than 80% for the Democrats. It's fantastic to get an Hispanic Republican and an Asian Republican, and yes, it makes me very happy, but by and large, they're voting against us. Right. 80% of Asians, 80% of Hispanics in presidential election after presidential right. election have voted for the Democrat. So maybe you can stop acting as if Israel and abortion are the most important issues when you are about to lose every single thing across the board. The Democrats have been warning, have warning bragging about this since, since the... The '80s, Roy Teixeira in Texas, and and um, one of one of Kennedy's advisors. What was his name? He's quoted in Adios America, just bragging about, oh, it's George McGovern's revenge with with the Im immigrants. We're gonna take we're gonna take California. Hmm, have you seen California recently? They gave us President Nixon and President Reagan. Good luck with that. Before the first vote is cast on election day, Democrats already have, I don't know, you can look it up, oh, 170 electrical, electoral votes. Yeah. They have California, right. they have Illinois, they have New York. By the way, um, because of immigration, they recently took Virginia. They're about to take North Carolina. They may be taking Texas. Can you wake up and see what matters here? Because you lose Everything, okay, every but. single thing, if we don't get control of immigration, it's probably too late, which is why I'm a little testy with Trump. Okay, well, I, um, you, you know I agree with you on this, but I guess my question is, it, it does strike me as odd that you don't see him as having worked along these lines. In other words, I don't know what it is that he could have done quicker or whatever, but I still get the impression that he is trying and fighting no, and that it's tweeting. been a battle. He's doing absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. In fact, the opposite of nothing when he is uh, he's elected and he speaks from the Oval Office talking about how he loves dreamers and he's going to keep them here. No, I want to deport dreamers first. The illegal immigrant felons, at least when you catch an illegal immigrant um, having raped a child, they say, okay, you got me. No, the Dreamers are on the cover of Time magazine. They have their own shows on MTV. They're showing up in congressional offices demanding amnesty right now. No, I want them to go first. Then we'll get to the felons. Um, okay, let, let's talk about something less contentious. So Ralph Reed last, last night oh, oh, on, let's a, talk about on a commercial Reed. break um, in the very well, exciting where? but depressing um, Dodgers-Nationals game last night. It was were very you, exciting. Did you, you see it? You, well, actually, I read your spectacular tweet <laughs> about it. I didn't even know they were playing the game because if the Mets aren't in it, I, I'm not focused. But uh, the idea that, that St. Louis got 10 runs. Oh, that was the earlier game. Yeah. Yeah, that was Cardinals-Braves yeah. because the Braves, in an, That's the tweet in that an I outpouring was just, of political correctness, got rid of the, the tomahawk, tomahawk chop, chop, chop. And right. hours later, <laughs> there were like... It was historic. Two pitches. <laughs> no, no, it was literally, literally, that is the most <laughs> runs ever scored 
in one inning in a postseason game. They were routed 13 to 1, and I read your tweet. It was hilarious. But okay, so, so you were during talking a to break Ralph Reed. In the, yeah, I switched over to Ralph Reed, who was explaining something or other. And he said what he was saying, what Christians should care about is abortion and low taxes and Israel. And then he went on for 20 minutes on Israel, and I'm waiting for him to say something about and defending the nation's borders? Does, does that figure in any place, you, you, you intellectual inferior? Um, we're talking, it used to be when I, and you, and when I first met you, when I was giving speeches and writing about abortion in high school, in college, in law school, large portions of the Republican Party, especially the Republican Party I came from in the state of Connecticut, were pro-choice Republicans. Bush was pro-choice. That was what separated the mice from the men. Reagan came along. He's the only president, I think, um, at least until then, to write a book in office. What was it about? Abortion. He's the first president to speak, um, I think, by teleprompter or something. Uh, not teleprompter, but whatever it's called. Um, at, the, at the National Right to Life um, rally they have every year. And he won in a landslide in the next election. Okay, that woke Republicans up. And even the stupidest Republican which is 98% of them, realize, hey, this abortion gig is pretty good. And now that's supposed to prove your bona fides? Who's the pro-choice Republican? They're dead. They're gone. It's over. Now what separates the mice from the men is figuring out that our entire country is about to be over if we don't stop immigration. Absolute stop. Deport illegals. Build the wall. Um, go after the fake, the, the refugee frauds. Otherwise, all of your congressmen are going to be Ilhan Omar. What are people thinking? And this nonsense the, the, the commander-in-chief comes up with of legal, legal. If I hear that one more time, I will fly to Washington and hold his head underwater until the bubbles stop. Okay, the legal Im immigrants he loves so much, stage 9-11. They're the ones who, who did the Boston Marathon with Ilhan Omar. Legal, well, except, you know, immigration well, now, now, fraud. Now I'm getting con confused. You, what do you mean? In other words, you're making it sound... What I mean is the country is ruined one way or another, by making illegal aliens, by just calling them legal, doesn't fix the problem. No, we need to slow things down. We need a total moratorium. We need to assimilate the ones already here. Probably take 100 years to get them to at least split their votes between Republicans and Democrats. I mean, we are close to the end, and I'm j just watching, you know, the entire, not the entire conservative movement, but an awful lot of the conservative movement and an awful lot of the Christian conservatives um, fiddling while Rome burns and refusing to pay attention to what matters because you're about to lose everything. Oh, yeah, great. Let's say, let's say we get one more Supreme Court appointment. Yeah. And yes, they've been great. Why? Because President Trump did with the courts what he should have done with immigration. I'm a complete ignoramus. I'll farm this out to people who know what they're doing, the Federalist Society. Why couldn't you have done that with immigration? No, I'll get, I'll get Paul Ryan in here. I'll ask Goldman Sachs. <laughs> okay, but you so do, that's what happened with immigration. But you do give him credit then for how he handled the Supreme Court and those nominations. No, only because he gave it to the Federalist Society. But you, he, give, so yes, you give him credit for and that. And the point I am driving at is that will be worth um, so much spit if we don't right. change demographics because we, it will get to the point that Republicans, it could be the next election, it could be 2020, where Republicans will never ever win another presidential election state texas will pro texas probably not right away virginia as i say is gone north carolina georgia florida and texas among others are on the brink are about to okay, flip but let's where we never elect a republican no republican senators no republican presidents at that point they just pack the court you win nothing you lose everything and ralph reed is talking about israel Are we on? Uh, I wanted to talk to you about the Kavanaugh nomination. I think that part of what's happening in the country is that people who either weren't for Trump or weren't for him very much have observed how he's been treated and how things like the Kavanaugh uh, nomination went, and they finally saw the light that we're in a cultural war with people that are crazy, that are effectively right. cultural Marxists, they don't really care about truth or the Constitution. They're just angry that they're losing something and that they're willing to do things that they've never quite 
done before. And I do have to say that I give this president a lot of credit for standing up for Kavanaugh to the end, because I believe yes. any other Republican would have caved before yes. Kavanaugh got in. And that's, As Ivanka was advising him, by the way, so I'm so glad she's sitting in the White House. Well, he didn't it's listen really, to her. No, but it's good she's there in the White House. It's very respectful to the American people who elected him. I don't know anything about Ivanka, so she's I will She's his daughter say, who was in the shoe business. Yeah. Even Jimmy Carter didn't bring Billy Carter to the White House. Billy Carter was not in the shoe business. He was in the beer business. <laughs> you know that, and I know that. Who okay. was, I, got, I want to finish my last point, and then I have a very important point to what, make. Uh, what uh, Who exactly is going to defend Israel when America is Mexico slash Pakistan? Yeah. What did Mexico do to throw back the Nazi war machine? Remember, you know, all the troops they sent descending into, <laughs> into Normandy? No, no. No. Well, Good look, luck to the rest of the world. It's not just our country, and I think we should care about our country because it is our country. But you, it is lights out for the rest of the world. This is the last Christian country on earth, and it is being swept away by morons who will not face what the truth is and still want to talk about abortion and Israel. You're losing it all without a break. Now, as no, to no, capital. No, we're going to go to a break, okay. and then we're going to get back. <laughs> we're going to finish up that, uh, that rant and... Uh, I love your rants. We'll be right back with Ann Coulter. Do not go away. I don't even need to tell you. You're not going anyplace. H have you done your Christmas shopping yet? I'm not joking. You got to think about these things in advance. If you want to get all of your Christmas shopping done today, can I recommend buying some copies of my brand new book, Donald Bills the Wall? It's really funny. It's totally appropriate for kids, but it's also appropriate for adults, which is why... If you have anybody that wants a laugh, that's what, what's happening in America today, and who also maybe wants to celebrate what this president is actually accomplishing, may I recommend this book? I know I'm biased because I wrote it, but I didn't illustrate it, and the illustrations are even more amazing than the writing. Please get a copy of Donald Builds the Wall today. Hey, folks, it's Eric Metaxas Show. I'm talking to a little lady I like to call Ann Coulter, and she's right here. Ann Coulter, uh, I, I want to ask you a bunch of questions, but you're making some points, so please continue. You were just in the middle of something, and I cut you off. Um, no, I wanted to leap to, um, I told you I had something controversial to say about the- um, Oh, Kavanaugh. Yeah. Um, I don't like that smile. <laughs> I think this could be bad for everyone. <laughs> okay, this is it. Um, that is- the Kavanaugh, I mean, you were describing those lunatics, probably your, your viewers and listeners remember. Um, remember those crazy women who were They were clawing, clawing, yes, clawing, clawing the door, the door and door. shrieking yeah, like you, demons. And not only like demons, but, uh, you know, I, I have to say that that level of emotion, I mean, emotion is almost civilized compared to what they were e expressing. It was really ugly. Yes, and if you can, in your podcast, show a little clip of that, it would be really helpful to the point I'm okay. about to make, which right. is, um, well, I'll start with the conclusion and then build backwards. Um, women should get married in their 20s, um, have children, and stay away from politics, journalism, and, and activism. You will notice that the activists, particularly the ones against Kavanaugh, the, look at the global warming protests. Um, it's always, well, I won't say they're always overweight women, but they are often overweight women um, who are obviously mentally disturbed, very upset, screaming, carrying on, weeping. Um, Kavanaugh, the ones who would show, well, the, the, the one I just talked about was really the most beautiful example of it. But I just think all of that passion and energy is better directed toward a family. And most women, not all women, my own case to the contrary, go mad if they are not safely ensconced with a husband and children and the world would be a better place. We've started, I started pointing it out to my friends and now we notice the okay. most unfair journalist, right. the most outrageous. Yeah. Every once in a while you'll get, you know, like a James Comey type. I'm totally convinced the whistleblower I is a woman. Um, so I, that's I, my controversial. Okay, now hold, hold on. Let me just let me just say to my audience, why do I allow this kind of hate on my program? <laughs> I don't know. Um, now, what you're saying, uh, and this this is of course what I love about you, is you kind of cut to the chase because there is no doubt. And, and let's let's put our cards on the table. You not only didn't get married in your 20s, you haven't been married and you haven't had kids. And my wife and I got married later in life and stuff. But you're you're talking about a principle that. Really, since the beginning of time, um, 
was a given, that people would marry young and have families. What we're talking about is how something happened in the 60s. We had a cultural shift, and many things came out of it. All the things we're talking about came out of it. And one of them is this idea that uh, families or marriage are optional or that marriage is, you know, probably slavery and I don't want to, you know. And in a way, I would say it has really hurt women. It's and that hurt men women and horribly. women are alike. Right, that, that, which, is, which is so ridiculous. But I think most people know it's ridiculous. Also, it's only the, the jobs are fun. talk about it. The jobs are yeah. fun. Yeah, people yeah. watch TV like Friends and stuff. And, uh, you know, it seems like, or I don't know. Well, Murphy no, but, Brown, work is fun. You yeah. just show up and start chit-chatting with your colleagues and wacky adventures and so No, there's a reason it's called work. Yeah. It sucks. Um, I, I mean, my life is one in a million. Don't count on it, ladies. Your objective should be through college, through whatever you do in your 20s, um, focus like a laser beam on finding a man you will be happy with for the rest of your life and who can support you because otherwise you go mad and you end up clawing at the door of the Supreme Court or writing utterly insane journalism, slanderous, and you are just lucky that we have a First Amendment that means you can go around defaming and slandering people. I've always wanted to have the kind of a program that would make news, but never in this way. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, you say stuff. And I, look, it cracks me up, Anne, because so much of you say I agree with com completely. I would not say it the way you do. Otherwise, I might have a home in Florida as well. But let me tell you <laughs> something. What you say, you're hitting, and this is, I think, why so many people, frankly, love Trump, is because y you and he both go right to the thing that everyone knows that no one dare say because we've been trained to 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 you know cover everything with armor of new, heavy the heavy armor of nuance and caveats before we can say anything right and it's getting worse i tweeted a, an article i read or a column i don't know late last night or this morning that made a really interesting point and i think he's right about it now that we're all how, how do most people get news? I can tell you I do it by Twitter. That's how I communicate with the world, by Twitter. Um, other people, Facebook, Instagram, I think I technically have accounts, but I don't really use them. You're, you're spending so much time getting news, generating, thinking about you know, what you're We live in a virtual world of news, and he pointed out there was this um, parody site that said there actually was a bank robbery in California. Um, the guy actually was wearing a Day of the Dead mask at some Mexican festival. And the article, the parody article said that the police were prosecuting him for cultural appropriation for wearing the Day of the Dead mask and might be able to attach the bank robbery charges. People fell for that. Yeah. And why? Because they're used to, and he points out, no, what's illegal in the Twitter world right. is not illegal in the real world. Right. Right. Well, it's... Uh, and it really, I mean, it does influence you. When I'm tweeting something, there are loads of tweets I don't send that I think are, are funny, but, oh, I'll be suspended. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, um, look, uh, I, I think that we're talking about so many different things. I, I just want to make sure we don't lose... You, you just made an important um, point about, uh, at least how I see it, about family and about that kind of, of, of structure. And you, you put it in your, in your typical way, but I just want to, I want to back up a little bit. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, I want to I talk more about this because it really Good. is at the heart of yeah. why we're in big trouble. Stick around. So d did you buy it yet? I I'm talking about Donald Builds the Wall. It's the second in the Donald the Caveman series. And if you haven't bought it yet, I'm going to have to remind you again and again, you will laugh you won't cry. It's appropriate for kids. In fact, it is a kid's book. I've written over 30 kids' books. I've written for VeggieTales. I bet you didn't know that. It's very funny, and it's so funny, really, that originally I wrote it for adults. But it also explains, in a kind of a fable form, why we need to build a wall. It explains all kinds of stuff. I can't go into it now because this is a short commercial. Get your copy right now. It's a day. Hey there, folks. That's the Electric Light Orchestra. I'm Eric Metaxas, and my guest is Ann Coulter. Ann, I've got some questions for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. You're ready to, even if I don't have questions for you. <laughs> I know that. I know that. I wanted to give you a copy of my favorite new children's books called Donald Bill's The Wall. I give copies to all my friends unless I show up at a place with two copies and I didn't <laughs> know my friend was going to be there 
like, for example, uh, Ali Hanley, or you know, somebody just picking a name out of a hat, and then I then I don't give the, okay, I'll the give copies. That to but Allie. no, no, this is for you. No, Ali gets her own copy. Okay. But but I just want you to make sure that you have a copy because here in in, in the world in which I live, people believe that this president is building the wall, certainly not as fast as as we would like. But there are people like me <laughs> who really do believe that he is building the wall and that he has heard your cry, that your, your prayers have come up world. as a memorial against... I think a, we should send a copy of this to the president. I, well, Baron I don't, should read it. I have his address, but I don't think he's going to get it, you know, if we I send it to him. we got to get one to Barron. To Barron, yeah, his son. Barron Trump, he's like a, like a like a nineteen year old now. He's like got yeah, tattoos. Yeah, but he's still living at home. <laughs> well, okay, tattoos. I think he's got tattoos he does now. Does not have tattoos. I would like That's to live right. in a world where Trump is building. He has a, wall. a Dukakis tattoo on his back. Nobody understands why. So uh, isn't that weird? <laughs> That's weird, man. Um, okay, and we were talking about uh, the. Oh, stop. We we have we have. Uh, this this big issue you brought this up you've brought this up since I, I know you I've known you for a long time we've talked about this but because we live in a politically correct culture there's certain things people shouldn't say they say they shouldn't say Trump typically says them you I love certainly that about have a, well that that's I, I think that's what most tweeting. people love about him I love his tweeting everything the media hates about him are the things I like about him it's just that it's got to go beyond tweeting how about the fact that when he's giving a, a speech someplace right and then you can just feel when he suddenly goes off teleprompter and rants, for example, about windmills or about incandescent bulbs and how they're much better. And I, I just think that's why people love him, because what other president would talk about what you're all thinking, that we hate these politically correct bulbs that they're foisting yes. on us and we all want incandescent bulbs. Yes. He actually talks about no, it. No, he says the right stuff. It's just that's where it ends. Um, today, you know, the big thing is, which I totally love that he said it um you know they're all bleeding about the kurds uh i i wish you know lindsey graham republicans cared one tenth as much about americans um who are you know being killed by illegal aliens now there's a new pill that's coming across from mexico that is just purely deadly they're making lots of fake fentanyl oxycontin not to mention anything of the general drunk driving um, well, you know, hang on, cartel. Hang on a tick. I've been bleeding about the Kurds, and I just want to ask you a question. Why do you make it sound like a zero sum game? The Kurds were our allies, and it's horrifying when George Bush the first uh, turned his back on the Kurds. When we turned our back on uh, the Vietnamese. Whenever you turn your back on your allies, you kind of you kind of shouldn't do that because we as America are supposed to stand for something. And it so we ought to figure out a way, but we've got to figure out a way to deal with that. I mean, you, you can't just say, well, let's just leave. You've, I mean, yes, you can. Why? He should have said it day one, as he promised he would on the campaign trail. Three things. One is this becomes a never ending cycle of us having to intervene here and there and every place. No, that was that was what Trump ran on. Enough. We have troops in 100 countries around the world. We don't have troops on our own border. And why is it just, you know, footnote here, why is it that Americans all understand that if if the president of the United States wants to bomb Syria without checking with Congress, turns out on false pretenses, but Ivanka cried, um, ends up killing civilians for no reason, as the UN found. Um, no, are, of are you and Ivanka not long not friends anymore? That's why we bombed um, Syria. Okay, you remember that? No. Uh, well, it was in his first year. Ivanka cried, and Nikki Haley. Oh, we have to. We have to really gin up on that. Okay, so we know that the president can bomb innocent civilians in other countries, but Trump can't protect this country. That's what they think the job of the commander in chief. But I is. thought that's precisely what he was doing. In other words, that 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 now we're still we're in the courts again and again and again. But but he just said this is a national security issue, and I have the right, and I'm going to take the funds from the Pentagon or whatever. And, and that's yet what he's it only done. took him ten seconds to bomb Syria. But it's now um, three and a half years, and we still don't have the wall. He's the commander in chief. Bombing doesn't take as wall. long as building a wall. Uh, oh please. <laughs> I know you've got a lot of experience in the construction business, Ann, but let me just tell you, when a wall goes Wait, up, you are denying, to put up a mile of so wall Lindsey takes Graham a long time. So Lindsey Graham and all of time. these Republicans and the entire commentariat, you're, they all think that, um, they agree with me that, um, no, of course, Commander-in-Chief can build the wall. Sure. There's no, there's no judge stopping the president okay, from so bombing countries, from sending in, troops all, to other countries. But in countries. all seriousness, because I'm always missing something, 
how, what is it? I mean, do you actually believe that he doesn't want to build the no, wall? No, no, no. Do you, you don't actually believe that? believe that our Constitution, our framers, yeah. um, in their wisdom thought, now the one thing we have to allow the commander in chief to be able to do is to invade is other countries. No. To protect our borders? No, no, no. He's got yeah. to go to McConnell for that. He's got to go to Ryan. We have to make sure okay, so district why, court judge in San Francisco so has to approve. You, what do you think defend he could our do? borders? No, that's what, craziness. But, but, but he's no 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 uh, milk toast. I mean, this is a guy who typically does what he likes. So, what do you think is preventing him from well, simply taking action? Well, we're getting into the action. psychology at that point. Point two, we're back on the Kurds. Point one, it's a never-ending series of alliances. Build the wall. Forget. Uh, we'll deal with the rest of the country by being strong ourselves, murdering our, you know, you know, on the planes, they always, you know, the gas mask. And if they, if you yeah. need your gas mask, well, no, that's right. Still talking. That's, I, I on, agree with you. Put on your gas mask yes. first. Yes. Then help your child. Well, America's dying. Could we put on our gas mask first? Right. Well, no, we can't. Oh, we have to take care of the Kurds. Point one. Point two, I promise you, the Kurds have no loyalty to anyone, anyone who's going to protect them at any time. Oh, they're going to refuse to work with us in the future. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Point three. Three. Um, no, I, I don't think what, what everyone is fantasizing now, as they have fantasized so many times about every other foreign intervention, never came out the way they said it was going to, and I don't think it's going to now. Great, the Kurds align with Syria. All we are, all we're doing is getting out of Syria. Assad, if you had to live in a Middle Eastern country other than Israel, there is no country you would be better off in as a Christian or a, 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 a member of civilization than Syria. Except now Erdogan is invading Syria. And um, my money is on, on Assad. Now that we're no longer opposed to Assad, which for some reason oh, no, we no, no, have no, 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 been. So we're getting some place, really and of course you, now we have to go to a break. It really shows you what the problem is with us intervening around the world. Okay. You don't even know what's going All on. Right. It's a bunch In your of crazy phony... way, you begin to make sense. We're going to be right back with Ann Coulter. <laughs> You know, I forgot to tell you something. I'm so glad you're still listening. Not everybody knows this, but a lot of the characters in this book, including the dinosaurs, are sort of meant to resemble actual historical people who are alive today. You might find, for example, Rachel Maydow in the book. You might find uh, Sean Hannity in the book. If you think that the orange triceratops looks like John Brennan, you might not be the only one who thinks that. There's a turtle who looks like a, a Senate Majority Leader. That's not the turtle's fault. All turtles have been cursed with that. They all look like him. But there's also uh, a senator from New York who wears half glasses. He cries a lot. He might be in the book. There's all kinds of people in the book like that. And there's a vicious gang called MSNBC 13. I just wanted you to know when you read this book, you're reading about current day history. Don't miss it. She came in through the bathroom window. Oh, hello. Hey, folks, before I forget, before we return uh, to my conversation with Ann Coulter, <laughs> um, I want to remind you we're doing a fundraiser for the Alliance Defending Freedom. Folks, there is nobody doing what they do. Religious liberty and liberty of every kind uh, is being attacked in America. We don't need to go into the details, but it's very serious. They're the only ones who are able to do what they do at the Supreme Court. They've won nine out of nine cases there. They've just argued their 10th. They need your help. They've turned to this program, so I'm turning to you. Folks, please go to metaxastalk.com. There's a banner for the Alliance Defending Freedom. I will spare you the details right now because Ann Coulter is right here. And we just have a few minutes left. Uh, I'm going to keep you, though, because I want to I continue talking to you. But um, we were just talking about 10 different things. You just mentioned something that you, you got me thinking, which is rare. Um, <laughs> it, it really is, because you hear the same thing over and over. It's yes. why it's hard for me to watch TV, because I think I could be making those same arguments. I'm, I'm trying to learn something new. You I just told gave you, me, you have to get a lobotomy to be on cable news. Uh, okay, big hit. I, I've, I'll consider it. <laughs> um, but seriously, you, you, you just said that um, if we were not to intervene in Syria, if we're going to continue with what Trump did and just pull out, you're saying that Assad in Syria would then feel free to protect the Kurds? Is the that Kurds the case you're making? The Kurds will go with anyone who will protect them. They are, my guess is, as I tweeted out, alternative scenario to, you know, the precious darling Kurds that apparently matter more than American citizens um, are about to be wiped out, um, is that the Kurds align with Syria. They have Putin protecting them. Um, they are safe. 
Iran is at a total disadvantage because we're not there strong arming um, Assad anymore. Again, Assad, the Arab leader who is the friendliest to Christians over there. Not that I care, and I hate that we're wasting so much time on this because, again, put on your, fur, your, your air mask first. Um, and that is my third point. Um, not exactly against the Kurds, but against the bleeding about the Kurds. Um, I want an actual number, um, not necessarily from you, you're not a senator, from Lindsey Graham, um, from the generals, from the rest of these bleeders. In my mind, I'm a senator, from but a, technically, <laughs> I was never Mitchell. elected. Okay. I want to know exactly how many Americans they think it's worth dying to protect the Kurds. I want a number. Is it one? Is it two? Is it ten? Um, how about to, to do whatever we're doing in Afghanistan? How many Americans is it worth dying for that? I want a number. Because for me, it's, it's zero. Um, for them, it's obviously a number higher than zero. I would just like to know what that number is. Is it 10? Is it 100? I think Henry Kissinger is sitting on that number right now. He would know. <laughs> He's Mr. Real Politique. I think they should be required to answer that when we are sending troops around the globe. Yeah to protect people that we, for reasons we don't understand, intervening for reasons that often turn out the opposite. As, and I was a big Iraq War supporter, as big as they come, and I think I still would. I, I know I still would defend the first few years of it. I'd defend the first six months of Afghanistan. Why we were still there years and years later. Why to this day we are in Afghanistan sending, well, what about the fact that sending we have troops bases? that weren't born on 9-11. Yeah. That is not keeping one American safer. Meanwhile, today, um, I don't even know what the number is, but some number of Americans will be killed by illegal aliens, um, will be killed by legal aliens who ought to be <laughs> My parents to be are legal and aliens, and they scare me. All right, I think we're out of time. I think I've had enough of this nonsense. And Coulter, thank you. We're going to keep you here, though. We're going to continue the conversation, but we're done for this hour. Folks, thanks for listening.